Hey guys, this is Colin with Colin Talks Crypto, and I just want to bring you two creations that I am bringing to the EOS ecosystem. First up, we're going to talk about blockproducers.info. And secondly, we're going to show you how to change your active permission on your Genesis EOS account so that you can use it with your Ledger Nano S. And I'm going to show you how to do so offline so that you never expose your private key on the internet. Thank you for joining me. Okay guys, so first of all, go to colintoxcrypto.com and I've got the two links down here under my creations section. First of all, click on blockproducers.info and you will see it's a very simple page. Basically, I've created a historical tracker for EOS block producer positions and their rank. So at the top of the graph, is first place BP number one and it goes down to BP number 21 at the bottom of the graph. On the right side of the graph you will see the block producers names. For example the blue line would be Huobi, orange line would be Lao Mao, and so on. And if you put your mouse over any part of the graph it will show you at that particular day, so this is October 14th as you can see by the bottom here, and it'll show you that you know, who was number one, who was, who was each place. And I created this because I realized there was no way to keep track of the change of position of the block producers. And it does matter what voters vote for. And this is the effects it's been having. So just to take one example to show you how I find this useful, let's take this blue line over here, the fourth line down. This is EOS Canada. And it's a block producer that I like a lot. They were so helpful and active in booting up the network. Very good people, in my opinion. And what happened to their rank over time? Well, they're fourth, they're third. They took a huge dip down to 10th. And now look at on um, October 13th, they're down to 14th place. Um, now they're 15th place on October 18th. They're 16th place on the 21st. Uh, we're down to 19th place on the 24th of October. And look, they're almost out of the top 21 on October 28th, 20th place. And so, guys, this is a way to keep track of our block producers. We do not want Canada, for one example, falling out of the top 21, a very highly regarded block producer. And I think this will be a useful tool for watching the politics of EOS and having a graphical representation of how votes change over time. And let's say that some particular big news happens or incident occurs. Maybe block producer Huobi um, is confirmed and proved to be colluding with other block producers. I'm just throwing that out there. And then suddenly a massive amount of voters changes their votes. We should be able to see that represented on this graph. So I just created this as a free tool to show what's happening with the block producers. Please use it, please share it, and please enjoy. And you'll see it also shows my latest EOS video at the bottom here. Okay, moving on to part two of this video. So let's go back to colintoxcrypto.com and click on the second link under creations. And this is the EOS offline active key changer. So guys, this is a big deal in my opinion. I'm gonna give you a little background on this. So I, like many of you, had a Genesis EOS account. However, to use that Genesis EOS account, we had to type in our private key at some point or choose not to use our accounts. I am very, very security minded and so I chose not to type in my EOS private key. However, this has left me unable to use my Genesis account for months and months and I kind of got fed up with it. And so while I couldn't find a solution out there, I actually created my own solution. And this is modifying something that Tokenica created they created a secure voting feature so that we could get that 15% of people originally to boot up the chain. Well, I modified that and tweaked it and I figured out how to make it so that you can actually change the active key on any account, on any EOS account, offline. So you only have to type in your private key on an offline source one time and then you can change the active key to a Ledger Nano S hardware wallet or other hardware wallet and you can then forevermore use and control your EOS Genesis account with a Ledger Nano S. And what will happen is you'll have your original EOS Genesis key pair for the owner key that'll remain offline and you can always have that as backup, as a paper backup wallet for the most high level access to your account. And then you can use every other feature such as voting, sending tokens, 
and um, delegating resources, all using your active key with your Ledger Nano S. So that's what this is going to let you do. And so there's basically a three-step process. Again, I just modified this is off of Tokenica's creation. So they get full credit for the main creation. I just tweaked it. And definitely review the source code on this and look it over for your own satisfaction. Do not just trust anything you download off the internet. I'm providing this as is, and it's up to you to use it at your own discretion. So it's a couple step process. First of all, you want to save the file eos.js. That's a JavaScript file. You can download it from the official site too if you want to. I'm providing these on my server as well, but by all means, download it from their site. And you can also download file number two, which is the file you're going to need for the offline part of this process. So first of all, step one, we click on link one. And what this is going to do is let you select an API endpoint. Let's select gray mass and click load. And it gives you a bunch of information from the block producer. The only information we need is the chain ID, the block number, and the reference block prefix. Take these three things and copy and paste them into a text file. And so what I did is I put it here, here, and here. I prepared this ahead of time, so they're not going to match perfectly. This you should already have. This is your Ledger Nano S public key. And you can find this by loading up Scatter Wallet and going through their process and plugging in your Ledger Nano S. And it will show you your public address. So you get that public address, put that in your text file here. Because this text file you're going to take with you to your offline computer to perform the transaction when you type in your private key. So you don't want to be typing any of this by hand because it would be a pain in the butt. And lastly, you'll want your EOS account name from the Genesis block. And most of them look like this with a G, Z, weird letters like this. It's not some readable thing. It's just some gobbledygook. So these are the five pieces of information you're going to need before you go offline. So that was step one. Now you go to the bottom here and click on go to step two. So I'm going to simulate this. But you're going to be doing this offline. So let's, for example, I went to an Ubuntu you know, Linux boot drive on another computer that's not connected to the internet. I booted up on that and had this file with that eos.javascript file on a thumb drive. And I filled this out and generated the transaction on that computer. And then I brought it back to this computer and published it on the internet. That way, my private key never touched the internet. So I'll simulate how to fill this out. So using my text file here, I'm just going to pull this over so I can do this. Copy and paste your EOS account name. You are going to put your Ledger Nano S key here. This is what you want your active public key to be, which is your Ledger Nano S key. And then you're going to copy the chain ID, the block number, and the reference block prefix. And it says 60 minutes over here on the right. That's fine. And lastly, the very last step is you're going to type in your EOS private key for your EOS Genesis mainnet account. And this is what you're going to be doing again on the offline computer only. Do not ever type your private key on an online computer. And once you've filled all this out, you're going to click on Generate Transaction. And if you've typed this correctly, the private key, and it matches the account name, only then it will create this raw signed transaction. This text here is the actual transaction itself. This is what you want to copy and paste. It's just a bunch of text. So you copy that, go back to your text file here, and under this little output section I made, just put a new entry, paste that text here. So you've got, this is what you want to publish online. This is essentially your signed transaction to change your active permission on your account to the key that you specified, which is your Ledger Nano S. But keep in mind, we're still working on our offline computer here. So now you're going to save this text file. And you're going to then shut down that offline computer. You don't need it anymore. And so now you're going to go back to your online computer. And all you're going to have is this text file. You didn't bring your private key anywhere with you. So when you come back to your online computer, you're now going to go to step three. And this is send the generated transaction. So you're going to select the same API endpoint that you selected originally in step one. So again, I used gray mass here. And what you're going to do is go back to your text file. And you're going to copy and paste just that text that you created. It's that signed transaction. And so you paste the raw transaction right here and then you're going to click send transaction to the network which is at the bottom here and so we click on that 
And notice that I'm going to get an error because this is not a legitimate private key for that address. I just used a fake one. But so it'll tell you here, it'll say error. It'll say something like success. You'll know instantly if it works. It takes half a second to work. And if it doesn't work, it will tell you why it didn't work here. So in this case, it says invalid reference block because again, I didn't use an actual reference block number. If it says it's something like invalid authorization, you probably typed in your private key wrong, things of that nature. So once this has been sent, you are done. Now go to blocks.io or your favorite block explorer and find your account. And what you'll see is something like this, where it says your account name, set the permission active with the parent permission owner to have the authentication of this. And you will see your Ledger Nano S public address right here. And if you've done that correctly, then you have successfully changed your active key to your Ledger Nano S offline securely. And now you can forevermore use your EOS Genesis account online and you can do everything that everyone else is doing. You can play games with it. You can gamble, you can vote, you can uh, stake, you can unstake, you can do all this stuff. And as a bonus, here's what I did. I'm going to give you this real fast and I'm not going to show you all the steps, okay? But I was able to sell my EOS black tokens, which I consider are very, very highly overvalued right now. Um, maybe they're creating a great product and maybe this is a mistake, but I think it was a good move to sell them. I just increased my EOS stash by over 4% by doing this. So if you have 10,000 EOS tokens, you can get 400 EOS by just doing this process, by selling your EOS black. So first of all, you have to go to Big One. It's an exchange. It's one of the only two exchanges that currently trades EOS Black tokens and sign up an account here. It's going to take you a little bit of time. I was able to manage to get approved and you have to submit a picture of you holding a piece of paper with their exchange name and the date. You have to submit a passport, you know, driver's license, all that information within about a day. I was pretty lucky. It only took about a day. I got approved and that allows you to withdraw EOS when you're done selling the EOS black tokens. Do not send your tokens to this exchange unless you get approved and verified for the next level. Otherwise, you won't be able to withdraw your tokens. So once you've created an account on Big Dot One, the exchange, then what you're going to do is go to Scatter, load up that wallet that you just gave the active permission to, and you're going to send your EOS Black tokens to Big One Exchange. And you're going to do that with EOS Toolkit. And EOS Toolkit is currently the only way I know of to send tokens from a Ledger Nano S. And so when you connect with Scatter with your Ledger Nano S EOS account, it's going to have the right box here is going to be a check mark. And when it shows a check mark, that means that you can send transactions. So if you see the check mark, just like this one on the read, that means you've done it correctly and you're ready to send a transaction. And so what you're going to go is down to transfer tokens right here. And when you find transfer tokens, you're going to change the symbol to black. And this is going to be the recipient account. And this is going to be given from Big Dot One. So it's going to be some uh, account name that you're going to send the EOS Black tokens to. They'll give you instructions on Big Dot One Exchange. And the account that sends a token. This is going to be your EOS mainnet account. Like we used, it's going to be this one in our example before, the one that you're linked up with your ledger, right? And then you're going to send all your EOS black tokens. I started with 50 just to test, and it worked really smoothly. Big Dot One is a very smooth, fast exchange. It happened in about five minutes, they showed up because they give it some time to wait for confirmations. And so after that, I sent all my EOS black tokens. And let's say it was this many. And so send your EOS black tokens. They will then arrive on Big Dot One, the exchange. And when they arrive under your um, accounts section, simply go to the exchange section and trade the EOS black tokens for EOS tokens is what I traded them for. I wanted more EOS. And then withdraw your EOS to your account, back to your mainnet account. And effectively, you would have just converted all EOS black tokens to EOS tokens. I know I went through that really fast, guys, and I don't have a lot of time to show you all the details because it would take probably 20, 30 minutes. But if you follow the rough outline of this, you can be amongst the first people to successfully sell your EOS black tokens at what I consider to be a pretty high price. I'm very happy 
with what I just did and getting all those EOS tokens. And the way I look at it and the reason I did that is because it's possible that EOS Black may go up in value. It, I'm not saying it's a bad project by any means. It, it actually looks like it could be good. However, I want more EOS tokens because I anticipate the value of EOS itself going up more than EOS Black tokens. And it allows me a sort of a compounding EOS amount because then any future airdrop, I will get even more of that because I have now more EOS tokens. So in my book, any token that you're not using or you know has a high valuation that you think is a little overvalued and you sell it and get more EOS tokens for yourself, that's just gonna boost the amount of airdrops and future tokens you're gonna get. For example, with like Warbly or Telos or these sister blockchains or other airdrops. So in my book, it's a good idea to get as much base EOS token as you can. And of course, hold on to any that you consider valuable. But uh, again, it's just that was my judgment call on that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it with anyone that you think this can help. Um, I think that there may be a lot of people in my boat who are just waiting for a secure way to gain access to their EOS Genesis mainnet accounts. And since I couldn't find one, I created it. And I'm really happy with using my EOS Genesis mainnet account. I can send transactions so fast, so easily. I just click the button on the ledger, it's secure. I never have to type a private key. And um, it just took me a couple of weeks to figure out how to do this. So I'm sharing this with you guys because I want everyone to be able to use their EOS tokens. And make sure you vote. That's one of the key reasons. You know, if we have all these stagnant Genesis accounts sitting around that aren't voting, well, that's not helping much. So one of the first things you should do in celebration of your newly regained access to your Genesis account is go vote. Okay, guys, have a great one.